or is there not a magma chamber oh, underneath God. Yellowstone National Park? Yes. And is this magma chamber of sufficient size that if there was an eruption there, it could potentially be rated yes. as a super eruption? Could, right? Precisely, could. If there is an eruption, then there is a good possibility that uh, it's going to be a moderate one. Enough, Rick. If there's even the slightest chance of this happening, I want to know what that means. And we would be looking at between two and three thousand cubic kilometers of rock, gas, and ash erupting across the United States in a pattern that looks like this. Expects an eruption anytime soon, and possibly with devastating consequences for America and the world. Jesus, Rick, just be honest with me. I'm being honest Are with you? you. Yes. This is going to be a big eruption. You've got to come with us. I don't need you to tell me what harmonic tremor means. If I agree to a red, everyone's going to think that we've got a super eruption on our hands. I am not going to be held responsible for some kind of mass panic. Mr. Uh -huh. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman. Yes, hang on. Mr. Hang on. Yes. Are you still denying the possibility of a super eruption? It's twice as likely as an asteroid strike, according to some experts. And half as unlikely as being struck by lightning, Miss Chin. And, and how, how many of us lose sleep over that? This is it, Matt. It started. Stress. I'm sorry to haul you away. No problem. Who have I got from USGS? No one. What? You can't get through to the field office at the moment. Hey, Dave. Michael Eldridge is on his way over. Is this uh, vacuum imagery all we have on this? Yeah, and it's only a projection. What? Yeah. Okay, Air Force, I need a plane up there as close as it can get. Take a look at this thing. Let's brief the White House and little we know so far. Dave, get back on the line. I want to talk to Governor Marshall in Wyoming, Joe Foster at Homeland, and keep trying the Yellowstone field office. And Bob, please get me something else to wear. Sure. Mary? Jesus. You love the job. You need to take a look, man. You need to see what's going on. Make contact with Dave. Let him know what's happening. There are two kinds of volcanic eruptions, red and gray. In a red eruption, the magma, it's actually called lava when it's erupted, flows freely from the ground. Um, you've seen it on TV, this slow-moving flow of molten material. It's damn destructive in its own way, but slow, very slow. You can literally outpace a lava flow without breaking a sweat. Not so with a gray eruption. What you have there, you've got magma trapped by overlaying rock, okay? The pressure builds and builds to the point the whole thing blows. The magma under pressure turns to foam and gas, which bursts upward in a vertical column at twice the speed of sound, 50 kilometers up into the stratosphere. There are no cell phones Field permitted off. on this aircraft. I understand. I need to Sir, I have to ask you to turn your phone off. My name is Richard Lieberman. I'm the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. I'm receiving news of an emergency here that could affect the flight path and safety of this aircraft. Oh my God, has something I, happened? I, I, need, I need to speak to the captain, please. Okay. Dave. Come in, Dave. This is Matt. Dave, this is Matt. Hey, Matt, it's me. 
I'm heading out to Bozeman. Where are you? Just to the northeast of Norris. What are you seeing? Well, it's a single vent, moderate size at the moment. How far from Bozeman are you? About an hour. Okay, listen. Rick is on his way back from Washington. We got shaken up pretty good back at the field office. It's completely down. What can you do for us? I'll be up and running in 30 minutes. It's been estimated that within the first hour, 100 million tons of pumice, rock, and ash were ejected. Powered out by something with the explosive force of a thousand Hiroshima bombs. Then the wind carried the top of the column eastwards. Within an hour or so, pumice and ash began to fall on towns hundreds of miles away from Yellowstone. Cody, Billings, Idaho Falls, Bozeman, where Dave was. Can you give me a hand? I've just got a few things in the back of the truck to unload. Thanks a lot. Rick! Rick, it's Dave! Dave! Listen. Guys, this seismic activity, this is... Has it triggered an eruption? Yeah. Matt said it's a single vent. Okay. Dave, I need to determine the size of this vent. I need to do that as soon as possible, all right? All the equipment's down, and Matt can't get a clear view from the chopper. Just put that down anywhere. I'm booting up the link to him. Please, tell me you have a high-speed data port. Oh, yeah, it's right over there. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Rick. Yeah. Um, I'll have a satellite uplink in a few minutes. Should be able to see the ash cloud, and I'll patch in the back. Okay, listen, Dave, I need you to talk to Michael Elbridge in Washington, okay? Get a hold of him, just, you know, and, and inform him about what's happening, and tell him that we need him to declare Red Level 3 emergency, all right? You got that? Red Level 3. I got it. All right, and if this vent gets any bigger, anything else opens up, then I need to know about that, Dave. Will do, boss. The biggest danger from an explosive eruption is the pyroclastic surge. It happens when the, uh, when the pressure of propelling the, the eruption column up into the air fluctuates for just a second, and part of the column spills from the side of the volcano. The surges from Mount St. Helens flattened every tree within miles and killed over 50 people. Let's just say we weren't going to hang around to watch that happen at Yellowstone. Go 